you know, for us, we are polite people. We, we, we don't lecture people. Uh, it is the Europeans who have, who have got the bad habit of lecturing an experienced man like me. You find I'm getting lectures from, from novices. If you look at our democracy, it is one of the most advanced. We have got so many elections. Now we are having elections for youth, for women, for disabled people. You don't have those in your country. So I can say that your democracy is shallow, but that's your own business. We don't want to impose it on other people. So if the other people could also be a bit polite and just uh, uh, know that we know what we are doing, it will be good for everybody. Mm. Um, do you by now prefer other governments like the Chinese or some Arabic countries over the Europeans because they are lecturing less and they just do stuff? We, we, we don't prefer, but we, we, they don't waste our time, for sure, that's for sure. They don't waste our time because to, to have somebody telling me something which I know better And out of politeness, I needed to listen, to talk, to answer, instead of saying, go to hell, and I walk out. Of course, we waste a lot of time. The, the Chinese waste less of our time, for sure. They, they, don't, they, they come on business, a, a road, a factory, to, to buy something. Management of, of our affairs is ours. We, they don't interfere in ours, we don't interfere in theirs. Hmm. As you're such an experienced leader, if you, if you look throughout the last years, maybe even decades, do you see that there is some sort of, of change, that the role of, of China in Africa, not only in Uganda, but in Africa, is growing, and that Western powers, the Europeans, the Americans, are rather disappearing, or... How do you observe the situation? The, the problem we have is, is superficiality. Do you have that word in English, superficial? Mm -hmm. uh, the Western political leaders and thinkers are very superficial. It's just really tiresome. Very superficial. You see, the, when the communists... I can give you some little history. For, I, I will not charge you. I will not charge you money. This is for free. Thank uh -huh. you very much. Uh -huh. When the communists took over China in 1949, we were colonies. The whole of Africa was colonies. Not colonies of China or Russia colonies of Europeans. Europeans are the ones who had colonized us. So when Mao Tse Tung took over in 1949, immediately he gave us support to kick your cousins out. For, for you, the Germans, you had already been kicked out by your cousins, but your cousins were still here. So Mao Tse Tung, we shall never forget Mao Tse Tung because he gave us support immediately. In 1917, when Lenin took over Russia, again we got support from the communists. The, the first African liberation movement was formed in, 19, in, in, in 1911. This was the... This was the Was it 11 or 12? This is the ANC of South Africa. So when the communists take over Russia, they, they support us. Support us against who? Against Europeans. Who had done what? Who had colonized our country. And who had ravaged, who had ravaged Africa with slave trade. For, for centuries. And that's how we kick out 
the Europeans, kick them out of, uh, some of, the, of, of them went away peacefully, like the British left here peacefully, but not before the Mau Mau, there was Mau Mau, Mau, Mau in Kenya. Uh, by 1963, 36 African countries were independent, but there was another 20 which was still under European colonialism. This included Mozambique, Angola, Guinea-Bissau, Ian Smith, a character called Ian Smith was in Zimbabwe, Rhodesia, then we had Namibia, then we had South Africa itself. So, by 1963, a part of Africa is, is independent, a part is still colonized. So the African countries tell the, the Europeans, go, go away from the remaining part of Africa. If you don't go peacefully, we shall throw you out by force. They thought we were joking. The Chinese supported us and the Russians. We, we kicked the, the Portuguese out of Mozambique. We kicked them out of, of Angola. We kicked them out of Guinea-Bissau. We even liberated Portugal itself from fascism. Wait, let me tell you. This is a free lesson of, of history. No tuition, you don't have to pay tuition. Uh -huh. So, this is the history of, 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 of Africa and China. It's not, a new, it's not a new history. Even when China was still very low in terms of economic uh, development, but because of ideological, so they you, supported us. So you say China? Just hold on, just hold on. Uh, so now, the, now that China has become a, a, a richer country, they have now upscaled, upscaled their... Maybe I can give you some example. In 1964, Zhao and Lai, Zhao and Lai, the Prime Minister of China at that time, visited Tanzania, your former colony, and pledged to build a railway line from Tanzania up to Zambia. It was called Tazara. Uh -huh. and, and, and they built it. They built it. Mm. They built it. They were still backward economically. They were not very, very, very rich, but they built it, the Chinese. The Tazara Railway, officially known as the Tanzania-Zambia Railway Authority, is a significant infrastructure project between landlocked Zambia and the port of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. The railway spans approximately 1860 kilometers and remains a major symbol of Sino-African cooperation. So now that they are much richer, they are, they are upscaling our cooperation with them, which was originally political, uh, diplomatic. Of course, we were also supporting China in the UN because the Western countries had kept China out, out of, the, of the UN, out of the Security Council. So we were supporting them uh, to, to come 